Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, June 21st, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, June 22nd. Things might sound a little bit different in this video. I finally was able to get some equipment to hopefully improve the quality of the audio where you won't hear the boom, boom, booms as I advance through the slides. I've kind of had my own supply chain issues. This was supposed to happen months ago. I've also repositioned the microphone a little bit, and we'll see if that makes a bit of a difference. Okay, well, we had another down day, and we're working off this short and even intermediate-term overbought condition. However, now we're at the point where things are starting to tip, or I'm just calling this a tipping point. If we go a little bit further down from here, we're seeing things start to turn more negative. Now, we could still recoup from that and start to go back up. We still have some extreme positive conditions that we're dealing with. What we're trying to evaluate right now is, are we just having a short-term pullback before we get set to go higher? Or is this going to develop into more of a correction after having a nice run-up before that? We're at that point right now where this will be decided in the next day or two to see what directions things go. Some notes before I get started, please know that there's a supplemental video where I talk about protection or hedging, mainly using put options. It's something that everybody should implement. Anytime you buy a stock or an index, you can even do that with mutual funds. And I go through an even deeper explanation of that in my courses. But this video is just designed to give you a high level overview of that process. I'm also considering doing a new monthly video on the economy. I've been working on that as I have time, and I'm kind of switching over to that basic idea. I do have a PDF where you can download the slides and charts to follow along with this. I have a private Facebook group that you're welcome to join. There's a new poll that you're more than welcome to take part in. That's on the community tab on the YouTube channel. Also, please keep in mind that I really watch the YouTube comments very closely. Anything that's irrelevant or has a name of somebody who's supposed to be a genius or a number of how much you made recently, I delete those right away. Also, if you do post something, it's fine if you want to make a statement, but I don't usually respond to those because that's pretty much unanswerable at that point. Videos are also posted on Rumble, and here is the channel in case you need to go to Rumble to find that. All right, let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a gap lower open. We went down to S1 at 4371, and then prices chopped above and below S1 for quite a while. As the day went on, we rebounded, but we hit resistance when we came back up to the daily pivot at 4385. Then by the time we closed, we ended up going back down below S1. We were down 0.52%, so now we've declined over a percent over the last three days. Volume continues to be below average, so that's a positive thing. We were going up on an increase in volume. We're going down now on a decrease in volume. We'll have to see if things start to turn more negative. Is volume going to pick up? The technicals are still positive overall. We still have this positive stance that we can hang on to. But as we go through the charts, you'll see we're starting to tip a little bit. We're getting to that point. Is the decline going to become more powerful or are we just going to work off some of these conditions before we get set to go higher? It's all about inflation and interest rates right now, as it has been for quite some time. What are some comments that we can make? Chair Powell did speak, but he didn't really say anything that was all that surprising. He just reiterated the idea that he wants to get back down to the 2% target rate. Most members of the FOMC are in agreement that additional tightening before the end of the year is most likely. In Wednesday's session, mega cap growth areas did underperform. The areas that have been strong lately, communication, tech, discretionary, they were down the most on Wednesday. Now, you could suggest that that's just profit taking before we get set to go higher, or are we starting to see a shift to having things turn more negative? The VIX was down on a down day. That's kind of surprising. There are futures contracts that are based on the VIX, and apparently those expired on Wednesday, and that kind of threw things out of whack a little bit. So if we see some kind of violent move more in the VIX in Thursday's session, don't be surprised about that. It could produce some information that might suggest something when really all we're doing is going from one futures contract to the next. 
the parabolic SAR has turned negative. And if you watch these videos for any length of time, that's kind of a big one for me. There can be times when the parabolic SAR has serious drawdowns, meaning that we generate a signal and then the market goes against that. But for the most part, it's a really good trend indicator that has stood the test of time. And it's been pretty positive. Well, after Wednesday's session, it's now switched over to negative. On a short-term basis, we still have the short-term experimental ADX, which is extreme positive. Our stochastics, they're coming down, but they're still extreme positive. And then the slope oscillator, as well as a lot of other oscillators that we look at, they're still giving us kind of extreme readings. On an intermediate term basis, we have the Sean Trend Meter. It's falling, but it's still in extreme positive territory, as well as the PMO that's getting kind of toppy. The PMO study is still giving us some extreme positive readings. Our oscillators, which we'll go through and look at the chart, and the TTM squeeze is bumping up to that black line. The dollar was down and interest rates were down. Now, both of these should have given some support to the market. And we probably saw a bit of that rebound in Wednesday's session because of this, but it ultimately didn't really help the market all that much. We still have our yield curves that remain inverted. We're watching these to see when they switch back to being more normal. That usually begins the countdown into will we or won't we head into a recession. Sentiment is still extreme positive. We were unchanged at 79. And our trend, it's still positive, but the green line's coming down. The ADX is still getting stronger. It's above its moving average, and both of them are above 20. Our bias is negative. We've had three down days in a row now. I'm still keeping our momentum at mixed because we have this positive backdrop behind all of this. Then the economic reports that came out, we had the weekly MBA mortgage applications index. Overall, it came in up half a percent. Purchase applications were up 2%. Refinancing applications were down 2%. Some Isabel Net blog charts. Here is an overall overbought, oversold composite index. This is a couple of days old now, but it is getting above 90. That's a pretty extreme reading. We could still go a little higher from here. This could also suggest that there's good momentum in the market, but with these down days that we're seeing, that's going to really erode a lot of the positive momentum that we've been seeing unless we get it back in Thursday and Friday sessions. This chart just goes back to the 1970s and compares it with what was the Dow Jones Industrial Average doing. I'm not going to go through all the events on this, even though I find all of these things very interesting. The thing to notice on this chart is the light blue line. It's the Fed funds rate, but it's inverted. So if it's going up, that means interest rates were going down and vice versa. We're still seeing a bit of an increase as folks are going more into risky versus safe assets, but we're still below the zero line. The exposure to gold right now, that's kind of the big thing that people were getting into and that became more of a crowded trade, so to speak. But ever since that's been happening, gold has been pulling back, but we're still seeing a lot of folks desiring to get into gold. Here is the exposure to equities. As they're going up, people are starting to get into that. If we do start to have more of an intermediate term decline from here, you're probably going to see these numbers start to fall. Then looking at the new privately owned housing units, we had a really strong housing report that came out yesterday. It doesn't look like it bumped up all that much in the bigger picture, but that was quite an advance. Then we're also seeing a decline in the truck tonnage index. Usually we look at this a little different way, and this is outdated. This is as of the end of April. This shows the year-over-year -year change in the truck tonnage index, and it's been declining. And if there's not as many big trucks being purchased, why would they need to if the economy is showing weakness? And that is pretty much suggested in this chart. Then we look at sector fund flows, where a lot of money is going into technology and a lot of money is coming out of energy. Looking at our analysis, the intraday chart where we did gap lower down below the pivot, down to S1, and then we just danced above and below S1 for quite a while. Tried to make a bit of a comeback, came up to the daily pivot, hit resistance, and then fell back, ended up closing below S1. Here's the intraday chart where we were pretty much flat in the initial overnight session and then stayed flat. And then later, as Europe was doing things, we saw some weakness in the U.S. futures that carried over into the market open. We chopped all around during the session and were pretty much flat in the initial overnight session. Here's growth versus value, where growth is just outperforming value slightly, but they were both down. 
And on a closing basis here is growth was down more, 0.6% versus value down 0.42%. For the mid caps, growth was up and it was down a little bit more with the small caps. So our growth to value ratio, looking at the SPY, we did see a bit of a bounce back as the market was open, but then some weakness going into the close. Looking at sentiment, showing that there's not a lot of fear according to the ulcer index. But then looking at this, noticing that we had a down day and the VIX decline, both with the line chart and the bar chart, that may readjust in Thursday's session. If we see a big spike up in the VIX, don't be surprised. It's just because they're going to the next futures contract. The VIX of the VIX also showed a little bit of a decline in overall volatility, where this is also looking more positive. We're switching over to the equity put call ratio. The 253 period simple moving average continues to decline, which could be longer term positive. And then we look at the VIX to move ratio also really declined because the VIX was down. And then looking at the move index, which measures volatility in bonds, that ticked up slightly since bonds were down, where even though stocks were down, the VIX declined and the relationship's getting a little out of whack right now. On these other fear gauges that we looked at, we ticked up slightly with this fear gauge, and we also ticked up slightly with our other fear gauge, but overall, they both continue to decline. We're still maintaining a risk on posture, even though it fell back. Looking at our advanced decline studies, we were flat based on price, and we're starting to show more of a decline based on volume after we had seen a lot of improvement in this chart. New highs, new lows actually ticked up a little bit from Tuesday to Wednesday. So our five period is still going up and we're flat with the 10 period. If we do start to go back up, we really want to see the new highs continue to show more strength. That just suggests internally that a lot of good things are happening. If we start to fall, we would see a contraction of the new highs and possibly an increase in the new lows. The advanced decline ratio has declined, but is still above zero. Accumulation distribution declined, but is still above the moving average. Then looking at the cumulative advanced decline line, we were seeing some improvement. Now we're starting to see some more weakness. We're also seeing pretty much sideways action right now with the regular NYSE advanced decline line. But this is still positive. We're still above this upward sloping trend line for at least right now. When we look at the common stock based on price and volume, we are seeing a bit of a decline after we were seeing some improvements. And then our broader range with the NYSE, we're still above the moving average. We were flat with the S&P. We're starting to fall below the moving average with the mid caps as well as the small caps. Looking at our trend, we're coming down with the green line, but the green line is still on top, so we're positive. The ADX is still strong, starting to roll over a little bit, but it hasn't crossed yet. Our shorter term ADX, we're still above 40, rolling over with the green line coming down. Volume continues to drop off after last Friday's options expiration. Our short-term analysis, after coming up to this level, we are starting to come back down. If we continue to fall, we'll be looking at the August 2022 high as possible support. And then on the bottom, you see where volume continues to drop off. Here's the 20 period double and triple exponential moving averages where we're starting to fall below both of them. Here's another look at the regular simple and exponential moving averages. If we continue to fall, we'll be looking at possible support here. Right now, that's at about 4,300 for the exponential moving average and about 4,280 for the simple moving average. Here's our stochastics chart where we're turning down now in the short term. We're rolling over, but still extreme in the intermediate term, and we're rolling over in the long term and still extreme. The force index is still above zero, but it is declining. Intermediate term look, the balance of power ticked down slightly, but we're still above the dashed line. Looking at our 50 period double and triple exponential moving averages, this is possibly giving us some support. Is the S&P going to be able to bounce up off of that? The Go No Go system has switched to a neutral blue bar. The TTM squeeze, we're getting right up to this black line. And when we're going up, we see a lighter shade of blue. When it turns darker, that means that we're seeing some weakness coming into the market. Here's a longer term look at that same chart where we're coming up to a point where in the past that has marked some kind of an extreme positive reading. Our standard deviations were still coming down and we're in the second standard deviation now. So we're not as extreme positive as we were. The PPO study still looking good in the long and intermediate term. We're declining in the short term, but we're still positive. 
The Arun indicator also is starting to fall as selling is starting to pick back up and buying is starting to drop off. The S&P 500 McClellan oscillator is declining but still above zero. The broader range NYSE McClellan oscillator was pretty much flat and is still above zero. The summation index based on price is still going up where we're starting to turn down based on volume. Sometimes this is a leading indicator for us, but other times we've been faked out by this. The broader range NYSE summation index was actually up a little bit based on price and volume, so there's a little bit more of improvement there. The Elder Impulse system for the S&P remains at neutral. The PMO, starting to get above this red line and rolling over just slightly, we're starting to roll over based on price and volume. The PMOs that are rising is no longer extreme positive. The buy signals are rolling over a little bit, but still extreme. We're pretty much flat with the PMOs that are above zero. Swollen trading oscillator, based on price and volume, both are still above zero, but are declining. Here's the negative sign that I see where the dot for the parabolic SAR system has now gone on top and that is negative. Doesn't mean it has to stay that way, but this is sometimes an indication that we're looking at a longer term trend reversal potential. The slope is still above this green line and starting to roll over. This is the touchiest of all the oscillators that we follow but it's still positive for right now. Also, the MACD is starting to roll over after giving us what could be an extreme positive reading. Here's all of our different oscillators. We talked about the slope and the MACD, the TSI starting to roll over, the PMO, which we also looked at, is rolling over a little bit. The PPO is rolling over some. Our TRIX and KST continue to be positive. These are our longer term oscillators. The Sean trend meter, after really being extreme, is declining, but is still somewhat extreme positive. The BPI, and this is kind of an area of hope right now, even though it declined, we're still seeing higher readings so far this week. The NYSE bullish percent index did decline, but is still above 50. Chicken money flow is declining, but remains positive. The money flow index turned back up, which is kind of interesting on a down day. And it's above 50 and advancing, so that's positive. The chicken oscillator continues to decline, but is still above zero. Ultimate oscillator also declining and above 50. The vortex turned back up, another kind of strange signal here, after giving us an extreme positive reading. On balance volume continues to decline, but is above the moving average. We're seeing a little bit of an improvement with the stocks inside the S&P above their 200-day moving average, and we ticked up just slightly to flat with those that are above their 50 period moving average. Here's another look at that same chart with different colors. The Copic curve rolling over but is still generating a buy signal. The Pring bottom fissure is also generating a buy signal. Our Fibonacci lines, we came up to this overhead resistance and we've been falling back down. The first area of support is if we get back to the August 2022 highs. Below that, we're looking at about the 4170 level. On a short-term basis, we're above the 100% retracement. If we fall, we're looking at 43.25, which is about 40 points below where we're currently at. Also, coming back down to the 61.8% retracement if we continue to fall at the 43.13 level. Longer term, if we really start to fall, we're watching the 42.14 level. Our different charts, still seeing a little bit more negativity with the Heiken Ashi chart. We have two black candles now. The Keggy chart is still positive, but pointing down. The Renko chart has not redrawn yet, so that's positive, and the three-line break is still positive. Our different indexes, we saw some weakness in the equal weight index, and it continues to underperform the S&P. And with our ratio between the two, where the bigger stocks were pretty much flat when compared to the smaller stocks, but overall, the bigger stocks have been really outperforming. Looking at Dow theory, starting to see some weakness in the Dow, the transports, which had been showing some strength, are pretty much flat now, seeing a little bit of improvement with the utilities in the shorter term. The transports, again, they are showing some improvement, but they continue to underperform the Dow. That could be longer term negative. The Dow is still hanging on to this R1 support level, so that is positive. And the diamonds, though, remain neutral. The NASDAQ, after coming up to this R2 level, has been coming back down. If we continue to fall, will this other R1 level act as support? 
then this is kind of the interesting thing that I'm seeing. We came up to this 61.8% retracement level almost to that point, and now we've been coming back down with the NASDAQ. Also, inside the NASDAQ, it ticked up just slightly with the cumulative new highs minus the new lows, but the indicator itself is now dropping below zero. This is another thing with the NASDAQ 100. We came up to the previous high set in March of 2022. We hit that level and now we've been coming back down. Right now we're at this R1 level, just a tick or so below that. Can this provide some support and then bounce back up or are we gonna to continue to fall down below this? The Qs still remain neutral for the Elder Impulse system. The BPI for the NASDAQ 100 also, after going extreme positive, is now declining. Looking at our FIB chart from the NASDAQ 100, we will be watching the 61.8% level if we continue to fall. The small cap index is still hanging on to support when we close right on this R2 level. But when we look at the Russell 2000 small cap index, we're declining with the RSI and the MACD is starting to roll over. We also have overhead resistance that we've not been able to break through. So we're kind of boxed in right now. We have support below current price, but resistance above current price. The small caps for the Elder Impulse system have still remained at neutral. The small caps ticked up just slightly, but continue to underperform the S&P 500. We're still seeing overall strength when we compare small cap growth with value, but there is some recent weakness. The mid caps also hanging onto support right above this R2 level and recently generated a golden cross. The mid caps for the Elder Impulse system remain at neutral. Again, longer term, we're seeing good strength when we compare mid cap growth with value, even though we did tick down slightly. When we look at the S&P 1500 and compare it to shorter term bond ETFs, we're still going up overall even though we did fall back. Another broad measure looking a little further out at a bond ETF also turning down but remaining positive. When we look at the tech sector and compare it with bond ETFs turning down slightly but still looking strong overall. And then home construction, it's continuing to do quite well. This is a positive sign for the economy because if the economy was getting ready to fall apart, would this ratio be going up the way it is? No, likely not. Growth continues to do well compared to value, even though it came down slightly. Then looking at the equal weight discretionary versus staples, we're in an uptrend with the discretionary as well as the staples. When we compare the two, we're pretty much chopping sideways now with the ratio. Home builders, which are doing quite well right now. The S&P is under a little bit of pressure. The home builders are breaking out. The ratio is really starting to go back up. However, since the S&P is going down as the home builders are going up, we're seeing this relationship start to fall off. That could be a positive divergence, or to say it another way, a convergence that we may be able to look to for support for the S&P. Keeping an eye on the financial sector, we were down slightly and remain in an overall downtrend. We're still above this longer term support line though. And also yesterday I pointed out that there's a lot of insider buying in the financial sector, which could also give longer term support. However, the regional banking ETF continues to underperform the financial sector and the financial sector is really underperforming the S&P even though it ticked up slightly. Keeping an eye on bonds, we were down slightly with the 10 year yield and we were up slightly based on price. We're seeing this improve a little bit with our longer term correlation when we look at the S&P to the long term bond ETF. Typically they go in the same overall direction. Lately they've been going in opposite directions. We're seeing that improve a little bit in a longer term basis and we're seeing it improve on a shorter term basis. The spread is declining a little bit but still is very wide. Folks are still tending to favor riskier bonds over more conservative bonds. But this is also a concern when we look at cash and then further out bond ETFs. If the market was more certain that interest rate hikes were coming to an end, this ratio would be going down. And in fact, it's starting to go back up. The S&P compared to longer term bonds still remain positive overall, suggesting that the market thinks we'll have a soft landing, even though this ratio did decline. Then comparing the value to growth ratio with the 10-year treasury yield, their overall relationship is still very strong and they have a tendency to go in the same direction. We're also keeping an eye on the three-month yield. We're still above where we were at back in 2007. 
and going back up slightly and we keep asking the question is this a warning sign we're not really sure what but usually a warning sign means not good things and that's why we're keeping a close eye on this then this is a newer chart that I got from Tom Boley in a blog post that he made he takes the US 10-year yield and then subtracts the German Bund 10-year yield and that results in this overall chart and then you see down below this is the dollar index and there's a really strong correlation between the two typically the market likes a weaker dollar so if the dollar continues to decline that should give some support to stocks and the inverse of that is also true our long-term analysis this is where the special K continues to go above the red line however as I keep pointing out we're seeing the black line going below the red line on the longer term chart an update of our possible positive scenarios we are seeing a bit of a decline based on price and volume when we look at the 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio we're still above zero overall but we're coming down based on price and volume we're seeing a little bit of weakness with the Q's compared to the S&P a bit of a turn down with discretionary to the S&P and a little bit of a turn down with large cap growth compared to large cap value with our growth to value ratios, a bit of a turn down with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps. The S&P 500 to utilities ratio is still holding up overall. We want to see this line continue to go up to give more support to the S&P. If it continues to go down, it also may suggest that the S&P may also come under some pressure. Then broader range, looking at the five period moving average of highs minus the lows, we're still above zero overall. That's positive. We look at the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows and we're getting an extreme positive reading. We can take this two ways. This is extreme positive and due for a pullback. Or if we get up here and stay in this area, that could just suggest that there's good positive momentum. The 50-period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows continue to advance because the indicator, even though it's falling, is still above zero. We saw a little bit of improvement when we compare S&P growth to value of the overall ratio. Even though it's in an uptrend, it's been going sideways, but the fact that it turned up slightly is positive. And then our staples to S&P 500 ratio, it ticked back up slightly, but we've seen a real decline in this overall. As this declines, that often gives really good support to the S&P 500. So what's our outlook for Thursday? And I was incorrect in yesterday's video. I thought the Bank of England was meeting on Wednesday. No, they will be meeting on Thursday. The technicals are positive, but we're at a tipping point determining short-term pullback or are we going to go more intermediate-term decline? The economic report's coming out. We'll have the weekly jobless claims and the first quarter current account balance, as well as existing home sales and the leading indicators, which we've been keeping a close eye on lately. Also, Fed Chair Powell will have his second day of testimony. This time he'll be in front of the Senate. He'll give the same opening remarks that he gave yesterday. It'll be the Q&A that the market really likes to focus on. Geopolitical events. It's all about inflation and interest rates for the market right now. Here is the economic calendar so far for the week. And here is the Fed speaking schedule so far for the week. Looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for June 22nd, we're neutral to negative across the board with the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. Thursday will be the 15th trading day of the month. The solid green line, that's the statistics that I just cited, and that does show some weakness overall. But when we're having a pre-election year, which is what we're in right now, we do see a little bit more strength. And then longer term, if you're following the NASDAQ, it tends to perform well on a historical basis going in about into the middle part of July. So our scenarios can't really go with the down one right now because we're at that tipping point. Hard to go with the up one unless we see some follow through buying. And we're definitely not going with the sideways trend right now because both ADX charts are showing a strong trend. So what are our warning signs for right now? The parabolic SAR has turned negative. The BPIs are diverging, but the BPI for the S&P 500 continues to hold up. The VIX is showing a lot of complacency. The NASDAQ cumulative new highs, new lows are showing weakness, but we turned up just slightly. The three-month yield is above the pre-great financial crisis level. And then small caps generated a recent death cross, but so far support is holding up. Unfortunately, resistance is also holding up. Earnings season continues, but it's starting to come to an end. I looked at the list and it's becoming a little more sparse each day. 
The positive signs, longer term positive seasonality and setups remain. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the weekly video. The new highs, new lows for the S&P are still holding up for right now. We didn't see in advance, but we're still seeing that green line going up. If we fall from here, that could be in jeopardy. The long-term special K indicator has switched to positive. Unfortunately, in the longer term, it's rolling over negative. The long-term equity put call ratio based on 253 periods, it is looking like it's going down, which is positive. The Copic curve and the Pring bottom fissure continue to generate buy signals. The S&P remains above the downtrend channel upper line. I haven't shown that chart. If we continue to fall, I'll be bringing that chart back in to show you. We're still in a basic overall risk on posture. Lower price levels may provide support. It could be a moving average. It could be a previous high. It could be in another index. It could be a Fibonacci level. The S&P is still outperforming utilities overall. The NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100, even though they're declining, they're still in overall uptrends, but they are pulling back after hitting that resistance. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio, it ticked up slightly, but overall continues to decline. Mid-caps generated a recent golden cross. And then the small and mid-cap growth, especially mid-caps, continue to be positive. So our conclusion, the S&P is positive, but we're at a tipping point right now. In the short term, we're positive. We're pulling back from being overbought. And that's what it looks like as of right now. We're starting to wonder, is it going to go further than that into the intermediate term? Even though it's pulling back and not as overbought as it was, are we going to switch now more to a negative downtrend? Long term, though, as long as we're above the 200-day simple moving average, we remain positive. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. Have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you in the next video.